as we said many times before, electoral politics is really hard to predict. And who knows what may happen over the next few months. But between Biden's no comment on Hawaii and the fact that Democrat strategy apparently heading to this election is to have people, millionaires like Joe Scarborough, tell people to stop whining. Have millionaire liberals tell people that the economy is good. Hey, you poor peasants, I know you th- you think you're going through hard times right now, but your suffering is not real. No, seriously, that's their strategy. So I'm going to show you guys just a few hilarious headlines to show how deeply out of touch. Oh, I got to refresh this. And and it's going to be very interesting to see how this play out because they, their strategy now is to gaslight people into thinking their economy is good. So this is one headline. Biden is out pitching his economic wins. Arizona voters say they don't see them. Now, this is a problem with the Biden administration where they say, hey, this this economy is great. You got his media uh, propagandists like this guy, Tom Rogers, who know the like, this guy is clearly connected to the working class. <laughs> who put this article out that is beyond parody. And I just simply said the United States is the most propagandized country in the world because this is the headlines you get in the most propagandized country in the world. So as people are struggling, people are struggling to, uh, to feed themselves. You had Americans that say they won't be able to retire. People, uh, Record amount of Americans are food insecure. Record amount of homeless. Despite all this stuff that's going on, this is what the narrative in liberal land. Biden saved the economy and lost a new age of prosperity. Why isn't he getting any credit? Why aren't the workers giving Biden any credit for his economic gains? Ignorant now, peasants. And, and this is the last time we read this. Really Male version of Joy Bayard. On this, I want to pass to the panel after I read this, because Democrats are in, are in such shambles over the fact that people are not buying this bullshit that we're in a good economy. Bionomics, they're calling it. Uh, you had Democrats qu- question whether it's the economy anymore. Stupid. So Democrats and liberals are so delusional. They're so delusional about this economy. They're saying, "Well." This economy has to be good, but they don't like Joe Biden. That must mean people must not care about the economy anymore. You even had uh, James Carville. Amazing. Yeah, this well, is, I can't believe you guys in here. Like, of, James Carville. Of course. Oh, of all people. I, the I guy mean, who, who coined else? that frame. I'm oh, sorry, guy, but uh, James Carville, the guy who coined that phrase, is the economy stupid. Even he's like, now, I man, I always thought it was the economy. I always thought it was so. Look, this is what they say. Even Democrat strategist James Carville, who coined the phrase, has acknowledged some doubt. Well, I always thought so. <laughs> I'm starting to doubt myself a little bit because this economy is quite good. Maybe it will kick in, and sometimes it takes a while for people to feel it. <laughs> so, then the first two paragraphs I kind of skipped. I want to give you guys thoughts on this, and we can wrap the segment. But they say it's the economy, stupid. For decades, that's been a, as a sound political strategy behind every effective political campaign. Focus on the economy and people's pocketbooks and get some good luck in terms of how the economy is actually running when you run for office and voila. You get elected to the White House and you win election. The question a growing number of Democrats are asking, however, is whether that's still the case. As President Biden deals with stronger economic numbers but low approval ratings, so liberal strategy in 2024 is, is essentially saying the economy is stupid. You guys are too dumb to realize it. Well, Man, they, what you guys about? Not my presentation. I want to give you guys thoughts and we can wrap. I hope they, they're, they're only looking at the stats they want to look at. They're not looking at the fact that uh, credit card debt is at a record high. And yeah. people are also tapping into their 401ks. What is that telling you about the underlying economy? They're, they're, they, they always mistake Wall Street for the economy. The, the fucking Wall Street was off the hook when everyone was locked in their house. What else do you need to demonstrate how disconnected how the bond market and the stock market is doing from the real economy? Why, why do you think people are charging up their credit cards like that? Why would they tap their 401ks? There's penalties. It's going to hurt your retirement. They're not doing that because they got money in their pocket and because the economy is great. And, and, and there are workers that said they can't afford a, a $500 emergency. How do liberals square this idea that we live in a good economy when we have so many workers who are upset and ready to strike? Because and to, Trump Russell's to, uh, point, uh, to Russell's point, I actually uh, got in this article 
because I wanted to see his argument. And 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 you brought up how they see they bring up the stats that that they want to see. Right. Um, and he bring up GDP growth to two point four percent, well ahead of expectations. What does that mean? Who set the expectation? You guys. So no matter what that number is, they say, "Oh my God, we got GDP growth of X above expectations." Inflation, well, you know what they say about capitalism: it looks good on paper, but in real life, it just doesn't work, right? <laughs> I mean, this is the thing: you can make an economy look good on a balance sheet, but the bottom line is, shit costs too much money, jobs don't pay enough, so people don't have enough money to get the shit they need and get the bills paid. I mean, it, it's that simple. Like, it, it's not any more complicated than that. That's why people don't think the economy is good because they don't have enough money. Like it's now, <laughs> it's really not rocket science, right? Um, yeah. But they can't square that because they don't meet any of those people. They read the papers, they check the stock market. Everything looks good on 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 all the data looks good on my laptop, right? And so they just they they don't see it. They don't see it, yeah. and they're always the last ones to the party. You know, uh, David Brooks just wrote an op ed in the New York Times last week. Um, that we covered on our show saying, hey, what if we, the sort of uh, anti-Trump Mitt Romney Chamber of Commerce Republican types, what if we were the bad guys all along? What if this meritocracy that we you know, have built and nurtured these, these past several decades, what if that's all a con game? What if that's all bullshit? Um, that's what the Bernie left was saying back in 2015. And it took of a lot of these people eight years to catch on most of them still haven't caught on that's why i thought it was noteworthy that david brooks at least had that moment where he decided to write a mea culpa of sorts most of these people still haven't caught on and they they never will they yeah, they just never will yeah so this is the problem with highlight this is in the article where they're making a great point about buying the economy this is how they're trying to spin it and i found this hilarious he says unemployment is at a 54 year low at 3.7 percent, despite predictions that unemployment was substantially increased. Wage growth. Now, we have diff different definitions here because he says <laughs> wage growth has been particularly strong at around 4 percent. Since when? Wage, wage growth is not matching inflation. But according to him, wage growth is strong. And now look at this. And most commodity prices are down some 50%, with some down considerably more. While while gasoline prices have increased somewhat in the last month, they're lower than they was 18 months ago. So they're, they're admitting that the cost of gas has gone up. But yeah, there he wants people to be happy with just 4% wage growth and unemployment being down when most people are getting tried jobs and record amount of workers have to get a second job in order to maintain their standard of living. But these are things that they want us to be excited about. And this is the cope at the article where he says, yet this, uh, yeah, I read it before. Uh, yet despite all these positive economic developments, Biden's economic approval rating stands at just 37%. What do you mean just? He should be ecstatic. <laughs> and this is, this is, they're so greedy. Like they be reporting us on this, they report on this all the time where they say, they'll say stuff like this. They're like, man, do you know that? And only two out of ten Republicans believe that Donald Trump should be prosecuted. I'm like, two out of ten, that's a lot, motherfucker. What are you talking about? <laughs> you, guys be, you guys should be happy that they four out of ten of it was like only six out of ten Americans believe that Donald Trump is guilty. That should be that's a lot considering the bullshit you guys are spilling. Well, the fact also, that Joe Biden got 37 mm -hmm. you guys should be happy about that. Let, it's you know, a, it's one. amazing that they're ignoring something very obvious in all this. Yeah, inflation might be slowing down, sure, but the prices have reset higher right. <laughs> in a way that's not commensurate with any yeah. increase in wages, even the one that you're claiming. You're saying yourself inflation was 10% last year, so if wages are increasing 4%, well, people are, it's costing people 6% of their income to make up for that inflation. You would need deflation to get back where we are, not slowing inflation. So, hey, you guys are supposed to be professional economists. You can't figure out that people feel poorer when now all of the... Dude, I get a bacon, egg, and cheese in Harlem now. That shit is permanently $6. No. That was... That was dude, that what? Was, that was three fifty dollars before the pandemic. Oh, that was three fifty. dollars for as long as I was living here, it was three. It moved up to three fifty. Now that's six. 
dollars for a bacon, egg, and cheese in Harlem. Now it's a Lincoln and a Washington bill. God damn it. That's it. <laughs> that is, that and, is, that, that and that's is, all that over. Is. That is all over the country, and that is all throughout the economy. Like, it's really not rocket science. Like, that no, alone like, will tell you why people feel this way. Of course, and it's such incredible gaslighting. Oh, well, inflation has slowed. The rate of inflation has slowed, but as Russell said, the, the prices have not gone back down. Right. Nope. They haven't gone back down. It's just the rate at which they've gone up has gotten slower. And you notice that the language he used to make workers accept this. He's like, well, as even though inflation is not as down as you want, it is kind of lower than, but it's still not affordable for us to live. It's all these excuses that why we as workers should accept. And that's what liberals keep doing, all these excuses that we are supposed to accept. And that's why I mentioned earlier during the cow segment, how does it benefit us to buy this narrative? If and this is what I truly believe, if you don't feel change in your life with the economy, you have the right to be upset about that, and that's because that considered blasphemous in Washington. The idea that we're supposed to be some sort of grown up about this, but yeah, I don't feel it personally. But you, I, I guess I just trust your word for it. You say the economy good, I know I don't feel it, but since you say it good, I guess I got the word. <laughs> right. like, how how right. absurd is that? If you don't feel it in your life, it's not good. It's not good. And how can you easily fix this? How can you easily fix that problem? You fix that problem by having solid, universal socialist programs. Like, people won't feel like the economy is shit if they have free health care, for example. How many people will say the economy is shit if they're if they not paying a shit ton out of health premiums and they now got, the, like, an extra 500, 600 bucks instead of uh, 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 extra to spend instead of spend on health insurance? They may feel like the economy is better. Because that's actually a policy that benefits them. It's not means-tested garbage. Right. Well, right? that's the key. They couldn't pass one, not a single universal hand up, right? Even if it's something like the child tax credit, right? Which I understand that only that only impacts parents. But for a family of four, it's 600 bucks a month. That's 7200 bucks a year. That's not nothing. At least you have families who feel the crunch of it, you know, most because they're providing for, you know, two, th two or three people. Um you know, that's at least something that nothing, nothing. You didn't even get paid leave. You didn't, you got nothing. I mean, what, what the, in, the, the inflation reduction act, which isn't set to begin reducing inflation until what next year sometime. I, I think even, even later. Um, yeah, there, there, there is no, there's no indication that ordinary people are going to feel any relief in time for it to help Joe Biden. And so that all they can do is gaslight people. So this, so well, it's an, do, it's uh, an we, extension of, of the politics they always use, right? The peasants are ignorant, right. and they don't realize how what wonderful things the aristocracy is doing for them.